Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this video, I want to take a minute while we have the holiday week here in the United States and just get you all caught up on some of the longer form projects I've been working on in the background for the last couple of months. I haven't shared much of any of this other than on social media. I've posted a few Instagram posts as these items have arrived, but like I said, they're longer form projects. They take a little longer to deal with. Uh, there's parts to be ordered. There's maintenance to do. There's cleaning. There's a ton of videoing to do, obviously, uh, but mostly it's finding parts and accessories to go with these to really make a good video that's kind of taken me the longest. Some of this stuff just doesn't exist anymore. So I wanted to catch you up with that and say welcome again to all the new subscribers over the past month or two. Been an absolute ton of new subscribers coming to the channel and I just wanted to say welcome and thanks for subscribing. So let's get on with the video. I've got a few projects here. These will all end up getting their own individual uh, videos uh, coming soon. I've got most of this stuff shot and edited. Uh, I just wanted to get you caught up though and give everybody kind of a sneak peek of what's coming up in uh, future videos and what I've been working on and I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's jump right in. Starting with the oldest and honestly the easiest machine to find parts for due to the resurgence of interest in analog tape recording, I'm lucky to have on loan from Trevor Higgins Collection the incredibly nice TIAC X2000R quarter inch two track reel to reel recorder. This one's in really good cosmetic condition, but it came to Trevor from storage and it's really in need of a good cleaning and evaluation before I use it too much. I've been able to get a hold of a seven inch reel for uh, some testing. And while it does operate, it doesn't sound quite up to par and it's got a couple of little nagging issues. It makes some noise when you first start it up, but that seems to dissipate as it warms up. So we'll take it apart and see what's going on under the hood. On this one, due to the really high collectible value of this machine, I'm only going to be doing basic cleaning and maintenance. It's common for these to need replacement caps and other uh, work to get them back up to original spec, but with the collector values in the thousands of dollars, you'd really want to get that done by a proper technician who can provide documentation of the repairs uh, for the next owner should you decide to sell it down the road. Sitting in the morning sun Sticking with the two-track decks, but fast-forwarding a couple of decades, we've got the Panasonic SV Series DAT players. These units have been known around the world as regular workhorses in the studio, broadcast, and mobile production environments for as long as most technicians uh, have been working. Unfortunately, DAT as a format is suffering more than most from a serious lack of working decks and available parts uh, on the market. I've personally got some old DAT tapes that never got converted after my last DAT machine quit working, and that's a situation I'd imagine many folks who regularly use the format to find themselves in these days. Shopping for a replacement unit now leaves you dredging eBay's mess of questionable portable units and the tons of prosumer models that were never all that robust when they were new, and the likelihood of finding parts of them now just isn't good. The Sony A-Series and the Tascam DA-Series are both options you're going to run into if you go shopping for a used deck online, uh, but I've owned both of those series uh, previously and already spent spent enough money on repair bills for both of those machines to last me a lifetime. I've run into so many of these SV series decks in professional environments and still work at a couple of places that use them currently. They seem to be really durable and if nothing else repairable in their old age. These SV decks are really loaded with all the pro IO and features you could possibly want, including one seriously cool optional wired remote. Uh, hardware like this just puts a smile on my face. The buttons, the weighted jog wheel, the sound of the tape mechanics uh, and the smell as they warm up after a few minutes. You, you just don't get that enough these days. While the two decks I have are nearly identical in the job they do, the 3900 is simply designed to be used with the external remote. I've got one on order which will hopefully arrive soon. In the meantime, both machines really do need to be cleaned and inspected before any real valuable tapes go into them. These units have an internal belt that will likely have spoiled by now, so replacing that will have to happen and will hopefully lead me to the source of the strange noises uh, these units are making currently. Uh, a lot of times just some lubrication on the moving parts will likely sort out a lot of those issues. Speaking of strange noises though, the deck that I'm most excited to explore, the Sony PCM800. 
I remember seeing these in magazines when they first hit the market in the mid-90s. The PCM-800 made even the most elaborate ADAT setups look like complete consumer-grade junk. By comparison, these decks made it really clear that they were for serious audio work. They came with serious features and an equally serious price tag. I was really lucky to find this one in reasonably good condition. It needs a good cleaning, of course, and it's making some noise that sounds awfully like spoiled rubber sticking and clinging to moving tape. Uh, but otherwise, it seems to be operating okay as far as playback. After a good cleaning, I'll be doing some recording tests with some new, fresh, uh, new old stock tape. And uh, I was also able to find this incredibly nice remote control in like new old stock in the box condition. It's been a bit of a journey to find the appropriate cable for the remote though, as it's a proprietary Sony cable. But in the end, it was actually a simple solution that was stumbled upon in a 10 year old forum post that got it all sorted out. So stay tuned for that. It's a pretty neat story. So, so that's it for this video. I hope you find these different machines as exciting as I do. These videos are not at all about uh, saying that you should use this technology in 2017. It's about remembering uh, where we came from and the work that a lot of people put into making these older technologies possible and the, the stepping stone that they created between uh, professional studios and large analog gear and what we have today where you can do eight tracks of uh, astonishingly good audio on something like an iPad. It's, it's a direct lineage. It's a very, very short amount of time that that took to happen. And these machines aren't going to get a ton of credit uh, in history. There were a very, very brief window of time where we were using digital tape uh, to record audio uh, in, in the grand scale of things. It's going to be just a little blip on the radar. And these machines are already getting incredibly difficult to find in any sort of reliable working condition. So I think if we can save one or two here and there and take a moment to appreciate them and learn a little bit about them I think we'll all be better for that and I hope you think that's a worthwhile endeavor because uh, I'm really excited about these videos and I can't wait to share them with you so I hope to be able to just kind of remember and appreciate uh, some of this technology that it's really just you, you start playing with these things even now and they're filled with a sense of uh, there, there's some magic in those boxes it's not like sitting down and recording with an iPad I don't know why uh, you plug a interface a microphone or a guitar or something into an iPad and you've got eight tracks and you might have a fancy interface and there's a capability there but there's some sort of magic with those old machines um there's something in them there's some you know th th there's a feeling of importance there's a feeling of finality you're using there's tape in there uh going around you can hear things happening it's uh, it's tactile it's it's definitely not just coincidental um, it, it's across all those machines from the analog reel to reels to the to the ADAP machines and everything else. There's just a certain bit of uh, something tangible there that you just don't get any other way, at least from an engineer. I don't know if that affects musicians in any way at all, but from an engineering standpoint, uh, there's just something different about using a mechanical process, be it analog or digital. Uh, these old machines, you plug them in, there's a smell. There's a smell to them, and it smells good. It smells familiar. Um, and and there's uh, it's just something to that I enjoy. So so thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks to everybody who supported the channel by following the affiliate links or going to the website or uh, just supporting the channel directly on Patreon. That all helps to make these videos, especially these videos that are resource intensive, uh, with parts and and shipping and all this other stuff uh that support makes this content possible so thank you so much for giving me the ability to do this and to share these really incredible machines uh with everybody that's it for now happy holidays i'll see you next time